Hello everyone. Oh yes, you're probably wondering to yourself, why am I, where have I been? Well, IRL gets stuff gets in the way. I know I'm trying to bust out these podcasts and everything like that, but IRL stuff gets in the way. And the shit that I've been through, ladies and gentlemen, you wouldn't believe even if I told you. Even if I told you. We haven't got love on this podcast today, but anyway, we're back for the Wrestling Matters podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We are back where wrestling matters and promos don't. Um, so, yeah, we're back on the podcast. I'm back. I'm trying to bust out as much of these as I can. But like I say, when IRL stuff gets in the way, it's a little hard to do. I ain't gonna lie. But I'm not alone today. I got with me my old comrade. That's right, my old comrade I used to work with back in the day. We're back together again. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Locke. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back with you, Anthony. It's been a long time years. Last time we were together, we did a show called Wrestling Unleashed, as well as a show called Wrestling Zone for your channel. And it's great to be caught back up and great to be talking some pro wrestling with you today. How are you? Good, man. Yeah, we're back. And yes, the Wrestling Unleashed and the Wrestling Zone is back. But I suppose you could say we amalgamated them into one. So there you go. So, yeah. Exactly. All good. All good. All good. Today, we're just going to talk wrestling. Today, catch up on a lot of stuff and um, with the time that we've got and that and uh, just chat shit about wrestling and talk about wrestling and talk about what is wrong, what is wrong and what is right in the world of professional wrestling. And yeah, we may go into some promos, we may not, but we don't do promos on this podcast. So with that being said, though, I think the first thing we need to talk about since we last spoke, and since I've last day, I think I talk about it briefly on my podcast a little bit, but we're going to go into better detail here, is the thing I call the Triple H factor. That's right, the Triple yes. H factor. Um, you're probably calling it yourself the Triple H factor. What is the Triple H factor? Well, the fact that he's bringing back everything and he's changing Vince McMahon's shit on his, on his vision of WWE. And the best thing about it is he's making WWE a wrestling promotion. Ooh, what an irony. Ooh, yes. What a concept. What a concept. World wrestling entertainment. Emphasis on the word wrestling, not sports wrestling. entertainment. So, yeah, he's brought everybody back. He's brought Kerry and Cross back, which is the right call. Braun Strowman. Ooh, where do else again? Tegan Knox this past Friday on SmackDown. Damage control members as well. Uh, yep. Io Shirai, Dakota Kai, and even, well, barely returned, but, you know, she, she didn't come alone. And the list goes on and on. He just keeps on bringing people back, which is the right move to do. He even brought back, bless his heart, Bray Wyatt himself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, what's your take on the Triple H Factor? Well, what we're doing is we're doing a reset of what we shouldn't have done is released all of these people. And I think using them in the correct way where Vince may have not gotten like a Bray Wyatt or gotten like a Tegan Knox or Dakota Kai, what have you. And Triple H is seeing it in his vision. And I mean, the Tegan Knox factor works because the history with Dakota Kai turning on her with the war game smash. So you bring something with Liv Morgan and Tegan Knox as a unit against damage control for the tag titles. And I mean, Bray Wyatt, First of all, the what he's doing now with the incarnation of this gimmick, battling the inner demons, so to speak. And he's going with L.A. Knight, who's a hell of a promo and can really feed off of that showcase, you know, fear. So you're showcasing a lot of great storytelling. And I mean, the list goes on and on, like you mentioned, but two of the newest ones a lot of people are talking about possibly coming back. If not, I mean, you got Lord William Regal, Stephen Regal himself. I mean, he's got his son, Charlie Dempsey in NXT, possibly coming back. That might have been his write-off with the MJF thing. So we hear he's going back to WWE and a especially with NXT Europe with the year. The other one that we just found out is Eric Young, who was just killed off with Violent by Design and Impact 
Sacramento Lee. So you have Nikki Cross going back to the old Nikki Cross. Why not bring back Eric Young? Hell, bring back her husband, Mr. Killian Dane, the all and only Big Demo. We might have a sanity reformation. So it's very interesting times of bringing back people that shouldn't have been released, but also really going back with hindsight and a 180 of what we've seen storytelling wise and just great professional wrestling action. I think Eric Young wanted to come back to WWE. And maybe well, you know, Triple H coming through, coming in. Right. Everything that, like that. Well, that's the thing right there. That's the thing right there, Anthony. You said it so perfectly. People see Triple H is in charge. It's like, okay, new regime. I want to come back. You see a lot of that. And I think that's what's great about it with the overall basis of pro wrestling, how Triple H wants to run it as opposed to how it was run. And I mean, mind you, there's a variety. There's a great thing involved with professional wrestling. So many companies like AEW, Impact Wrestling, MLW, you have a influx if you will uh, accoutrement so i mean with them coming back under the new regime triple h has been hitting it out of the park and i can't wait to see what he does of course there's going to be hits and misses but you know triple h is working his butt off to get back right to where we were with the <clears throat> more on AEW later by the way with the whole william regal thing and all that and, and AEW in general also want to talk about the nwa yeah as well later on which is Going, it seems to be going down the toilet from what I'm seeing, but I'll more on that later on. But yeah, WWE. So thank fucking God Triple H took that gimmick off LA Knight, man, and brought him back to what he is, which is LA Knight is just WWE's version of Eli Drake. Drake. Yep. You know, it's pretty much that. I don't think they could be, I don't think they couldn't use the name, to be honest with you, which it is what it is. But that's LA Knight's version is Eli Drake is LA Knight in WWE and that's Eli Drake's that's their Eli Drake version yes and thank fuck they brought him back to that gimmick because I don't know where he was going with the models thing I mean oh, well, well they made him like the old Rick Martel all they needed was some Aramis with him and then you have Mansoor as Masse and then Ma- Mansoir and then you have Masse the former mace of, of retribution by the way is that is that that big mace of, yes oh, yeah the big mace right I yes. realized the other day when I when I figured that out Right, I was looking at that dude. Mm-hmm. That's the guy that was on Raw's broadcast team at one point, where where Brock Lesnar went over to attack Law, and he stood up for Law, and, and he got the crap beat out of him. Yeah, that's Dio Madden. <laughs> and then they take him out with all oh, this, put throw a model and give it on you. It's fine, you know, right? Well, you're a well, complete twat. Right. Well, you go from retribution with the mask, and now you're now you're a male model. So hey, uh, yeah, they're not. Wow. Wow, just wow. Thank God they took LA Knight out of that. Um, the tag team division in WWE seems to be, although they've probably got a lot of work to do on that, I ain't going to lie, but it seems to be building up a little bit back up a little bit. It's probably going to be a slow process with the WWE considering Vince fucked the whole thing up. But, well, the, the, I'm talking about the main roster WWE, the main roster of WWE, NXT and the other ones. It's no brainer, but. It's going to take a lot more for them to build that up. Well, what you have with the tag division, yeah. I mean, when you have the Brawling Brutes, which is a dominant on there, you have so many great tag teams that we see, the New Day, the Usos. We have Imperium doing their thing. We have so many great tag teams that have come up. And, I mean, the list just keeps going on and on with what we see with the tag teams. Now, we'll ta- of course, we'll take out Maximum Male Models from yeah. that. I got we- the Brawling Imperium back. Oh, <laughs> and also you got Brad, you got back Imperium. I mean, Fabian Eichner is Giovanni Vinci now, but we all know it's Fabian Eichner. Oh yeah, it's Fabian. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 the same people but with different names. With different names, exactly. And I mean, you yeah. also have Hit Row is back minus Swerve sort of Strickland. So I mean, there's a lot, and you got the Viking Raiders, and they yeah. brought back Sarah Logan, who is now Valhalla. Good move. And yes. she's probably getting some, st- and she's probably getting some stick from the NWA as well, because considering she's being accused of stealing somebody's gimmick in the NWA, oh, as well. So, all right, well, hold on. We'll, we'll bring this up because for those that don't know, on Twitter, first and foremost, Sarah Logan has been doing this Viking thing for years, and you know, with her in her real life, with getting married to Eric of the Viking Raiders, and just their overall okay. practice, right? So you have Max the Impaler who is a great gimmick. She's done a, she's wrecking ball, I believe on wow. Women of wrestling, which is David McLean's promotion, David McLean, who did the original gorgeous ladies of wrestling. So Max, the impaler has a similar look, but Sarah Logan has been doing this years before she has. So that's where that Twitter backlash came from. Yeah. I was just, bullshit. you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. I, was just, I saw that on the uh, dirt sheets and everything. I'm like, Oh God, here we go. Yep. Oh yeah. You're going to copy this and everything like that. So fuck. 
Everybody's copying everybody nowadays, for fuck's sake. Who gives a shit? Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good to see the, the Viking Raiders back, or the, or the war... Is it... Was it the war machine that they were called in Ring of Honor? Well, yeah, they were war machine, yes. Yeah, I'd prefer them as war machine, if I'm being honest with you, but anyway, that's just me. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to see them back as well. I'm glad to see Sarah Logan back, and obviously they're going to put it her with her husband mm-hmm. in the Viking Raiders, so that makes crystal clear sense as well. WWE's undisputed. I mean, we talked about the tag team titles. Who is the team? Because we all know eventually the Usos, even though they've been fucking phenomenal, they're going to lose the belts at some point. Mm-hmm. Who would be the team, in your view, to beat them? Well, the talk that's going on, and I can see this, is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn getting back together and, you know, just become being the team that beats the Usos. And well, we'll see how the story goes, because they could go many different ways with the bloodline now. But I think it's very interesting and telling if it is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they get back on the same page and beat the Usos. That would be interesting, but I think that's the most logical stance of where to go now to who to beat the Usos. I mean... If you wanted to, somebody said from an interesting side of things, because Solo Soko is always so serious and he's not really involved with his brothers a lot, why not have it be Sami Zayn and Solo Sokoa being the Usos, which would be something very interesting. But if I was to lean, I think we're going to go more towards the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens direction. Yeah, it wouldn't fit. I don't think it would fit that well with Sokoa. Right. Um, for the whole Sokoa thing. I mean, I like Sokoa as he is. I mean, you need to put it in the kind of championship on him or US title, whatever, on him. Um, but yeah, I, I, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Obviously, there's going to be swerved there at some point. Then, if it is going to be Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, um, obviously they've been tag team champions before the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Um, but yeah, I just I just don't know how that's going to play out. The talk of the town is speaking of the speaking of the Usos. Let's talk about the head chief, yes, or travel boy himself, Mister Roman Reigns. He's got the undisputed belts, well, the, the, the titles, the WWE title and the Universal title, combination with the undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> From what I'm getting, there is two people that are in line to beat him. Mm-hmm. There is two people that are in line to beat him. One of them being The Rock, because I don't give a fuck what anyone says, WWE is obsessed with getting The Rock and Roman Reigns. And rightly so. It's just a case of when is is the rock available. Hopefully he will be at WrestleMania. Again, more on that little subject later on, because apparently Rock is being put down to win something. More on that in a minute. But the other option for me is Cody Rose. As well. Those two are the logical ones to for him to think. Because we all know what Cody said and everything. You know, Cody saying him saying this and everything. Apparently, there's been rumors that Cody is go- not going to be wrestling uh, Roman at WrestleMania or going for the championship at WrestleMania. He's going to be facing Seth Rollins again. Oh, God. I don't want that. I, I, well, okay. I don't hate that because of the crap that he's been talking about. I don't hate it. But I think the logical reason I would also go to Roman is because he cut that promo that he wants to do it for Dusty. And I think the promos you could have and the storytelling between the Rhodes family and the Unawaii family like, <laughs> it makes perfect sense. And yeah. with the Rock, first of all, a lot of the rumors have been that the Rock is going to win the Royal Rumble and challenge yeah. Roman. There you go. That's but but that's that's the thing too. First and foremost, that's a match I would love to see, as we all would. But I don't think it needs to be for the titles. But if it is for the titles, I think I would keep one on because there's two nights of WrestleMania. I'd have Roman keep it and beat The Rock for one of them, and then I would have maybe Cody beat him for the other one. So at least he walks out with one. So there's many different scenarios you can go to. I think both would be great matches, but we shall see. Time will tell. But Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, I would not hate because of the fact of the crap that Seth has been saying and also stuff we could go back to that because you know code you know i don't mind it we'll we'll see how it goes but if it's roman and cody i ain't mad at that either well first of all you saying about the belts thing because because yeah. wrestlemania is two nights there is talk of them doing that defend okay. one belt one night defend the other belt the next time and have roman lose both of them and um, there is talk of them doing that you talk about cody i think cody wants to win the wwe title <laughs> 
if I'm being honest with you. He wants to win the WWE title. He doesn't want to look at he doesn't want to look twice at the Universal title. I think the Rock winning the Rock and Roman for the titles, it will mean more for the titles than it would be one on one. It probably would work one on one without the titles, but I think it would mean more for them to win the titles because you've got this as well. Roman Reigns being the tribal chief. I am the tribal chief. Rock said it in an interview. No, I'm the tribal chief around here. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. But I'm not down with Rock winning the Rumble. I'm sorry. If that pisses anybody off, then it is what it is. But I'm not down. I compare the Rock winning or the Rock potentially winning the Rumble to freaking Batista winning it. <laughs> that, motherfucker come, that motherfucker comes back. Oh, yeah, I'm coming back. My debut's back in the Rumble. He goes and wins the fucking Rumble. It's like, what the fuck? Where's that? Where's Brian Danielson? What happened to Brian? Uh, Hello, <laughs> WWE logic here. Hello, you know, and that's why we ended up getting the triple threat matchup at WrestleMania. Yes, I mean, I don't think it would. I don't. I don't put it to that level. But yeah, Rock winning would would uh would not be ideal for me. I would like. I they put the WWE title in. So just... yeah, they did when he beat Punk back at Royal Rumble 2013. You're right. Yeah, that I was mean, a, that was already to set up the Roman the, the right the Roman. Roman. Rock, Rock, no, the Rock and Cena too, and everything, you know, you know, once in a lifetime, yeah, right, you know, like, I mean, if, you know, like, like the way going to give Cena a rematch and get his revenge on him for crying out loud. Anyone saw that fucking film? Well, that's the other thing too with Cena, like you mentioned, like there's talk of doing not Cena in theory at WrestleMania because of that one exchange that they had, and I think they, I mean, they want to have the young guy like in Austin Theory, you know, the cell, the selfies, the selfies are gone. He's being taken serious. I'm a man now, and there's talk of him and Cena, which I would not hate. I think it would be a good match. I mean, John Cena is slated to wrestle. They want him to wrestle at WrestleMania. Somebody put out a theory of why not have him go against Gunther because. He's never won the Intercontinental Championship, which, I mean, that's interesting as well. Somebody put out, I know Logan Paul said he would like to wrestle John Cena at WrestleMania, but I'm fine with A-Town down, Austin Theory. Who do you think Cena should face at WrestleMania? Not Gunther. Not Gunther, no. No, no, no. Because I see that as another Rusev. Yes, you're another right. Rusev. Dominant, dominant, dominant. runs right into Cena and loses. Nah. If you're going to put the Intercontinental Championship on him, okay, do it. Okay? Yeah. So if you have a belt in the company, okay, fine. Well, there's a better way to do it. Not Gunther, okay? Logan Paul, I wouldn't hate on that because Logan Paul has hanged with Roman. He's hanged with The Miz. He's had a WrestleMania matches here and there. He even had a SummerSlam match here and there. And, he, and he's proved that he could do this. Austin Theory, though, was seen there. Thank God, first of all, Triple H is changing the style and the gimmick of Austin Theory. Yes, because for anybody who knows, I've, I had a discussion with this on one of my streams. People seem to hate Theory, but I hated Theory because he was basically Vince McMahon's bitch boy. Yes, you know, Daddy's not here anymore. It's Uncle Paul now. Um, but now it seems that we're looking at the theory that we knew from, say, Evolve, mm -hmm. because. I mean, I saw, I didn't see all of his work, but I saw a bit of his work in, in an Evolve, and he was great in Evolve. Yes. Now we need that theory back, and we seem to be getting that theory back. He's got the United States title back. Again, two-time champion. In all honesty, he should never have lost it to begin with, but whatever. Um, we all knew he wasn't going to get the, the undisputed title, not when Roman's about. So I think wasting, I think Vince McMahon putting the money in the bank on him was a complete waste of time. So hopefully down the road he'll get another crack at that just to make up for it because with Roman about he wasn't going to get it. Maybe they just put the maybe they just put it on him anyway to keep him from cashing in on Roman and ruining it or anything or ruin any plans that they had, but whatever. But I'm liking this theory. If theory goes down this right path, everybody's like, Oh, I don't like theory, he's not good, he can't wrestle anything like that. Go and watch this fucking evolve stuff, then come back and tell me you can't wrestle. Right. I mean, go on the WWE network and watch the Evolve Anniversary show where he's killing it on that show and then his overall evolve work. <laughs> Now, everybody was crapping on the fact that he cashed in on the U.S. title and, you know, they called an audible. Well, first of all, like you mentioned, he ain't cashing in on Roman. Roman ain't losing that title. But what really adds the element of it, too, it's like, yeah, people say I have the most I've most failed cash in, whatever. But you know what? I don't care. I'm about me now. I'm not a man. I ain't nobody's boy. I, like we talked about, the change it with the character, the intricacies and the nuances of, hey, look at me. I don't need no goddamn selfie anymore. I'm wearing this. I'm wearing like, you know, I'm showing off my body. I'm wearing this jacket. I'm looking nice. I'm looking fresh. And I want to be taken seriously. 
honestly. And personally, I think him and Seth Rollins and where we're going that direction, I want to see more of it because they have great chemistry together. I mean, they were, he was one of the disciples of Seth Rollins yeah. back in his history there. I love that. I think the character direction where we're going, because let's be honest, he was the bitch boy. Like when Drew McIntyre came in as the chosen one, Vince saw him as the chosen one. Austin Theory was looked at as the chosen one and Vince made him go through the hoops. So it's interesting, man. But yeah, no, I like this new direction and the way that Triple H, a lot of people thought like, why does Triple H bury Austin Theory? It's like, hello, Triple H is the one who signed Austin Theory and also worked with him in NXT and helped build and upgrade him. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, yeah, but yeah, Austin Theory is the future, man. Yeah, and Austin Theory, like I say, Triple H knows what he's doing with these types of talent. He's not burying them. He ain't Vince McMahon. He knows what he's doing. It's just it takes time to re, especially to rebuild him because I mean, he was you know Vince McMahon's bitch boy, and like Roman said, Daddy's not here anymore. It's all about right. Uncle Paul now. That's so the, that's the thing, Anthony. I don't mean to cut you off, but it's it's the term storytelling that triple h understands the long-term storytelling and i mean i look at it from a stance too as well you see people online i mean social media has its influx people were complaining oh god will somebody take the title off of roman reigns already and i'm like okay old school thinking bruno san martino held that championship for years upon years upon years hulk hogan years upon years upon years we've seen people hold it for numerous years cm punk 434 days a long time span with that championship people just don't want to have long-term storyline anymore they just don't understand the significance of holding it for that long and that old school mindset. People just want to rush, 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 rush right away. Yeah, I, I can understand with Roman, people wanting the, the belt off Roman. But yeah, I can understand that. But if, depending on what they'll do, they'll end up going, they'll end up whinging if they put it on The Rock. If The Rock wins it at WrestleMania and beats him for the for the belt at Mania, they'll end up whinging anyway. So you can't win. Let's face it. You can't win on that. Um. But yeah, I mean, I don't know where they're going with Seth Rollins. That's another thing. I've been watching Raw, and I'm seeing what they're doing with Rollins and that. And he seems to be a baby face. Yeah, they're slowly transfer transforming yeah, him back. Slow, it's a slow transfer. And it seems to be developing into a feud with him in theory. Huh? Um, mainly over the US title. Because obviously Rollins, now, Rollins wants it back now and everything. But now obviously they're probably going to use Rollins to to build him up and push him or elevate, at least try to elevate theory into that level that he needs to be. So, yeah, I mean, this is the guy that was on. I just hope they don't, he doesn't like fall out of favor or anything like that with Rollins because we all know Rollins is talented and all that. We all know. We ain't stupid. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll just see what happens. I mean, we've got WrestleMania. I mean, Royal Rumble is going to be interesting as well. That's going to be next month. Yes. I mean, all this I'm, talk about all this talk about the rock, there's possible chance Cody might win it as well. I'm yeah. for that too, man. And I mean, with what we got going with the Rumble with Roman and KO again, a rematch from what we saw at the past year's Rumble, like I'm for that. Like I'm all for Roman and KO one more time because their feud was so good. And then also you could see Sammy's involvement. I mean, there was also talk of because they're going to be in Montreal, I believe, for the Elimination Chamber, having Roman go against Sami Zayn. You know what I'm saying? So it's interesting the way that you can put layers to that and how we lead to WrestleMania and whatnot before that. So it's, it's really an interesting time to see the storytelling between Roman and how we get to wrestlemania so i mean and i like the ko dynamic with him because they're actually ko is the fight owens fight he's the prize fighter like we saw when he first debuted in nxt so finally ko's going back to being that prize fighter i think he i, I think he needs to be the what they call the, 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 triple h needs to allow the package power driver i want him to be the kevin steen yes yes the, the, yep you know all right do the stunner keep the stunner because obviously austin allowed you to use that you know, keep that, whatever. I want him to be Kevin Steen. Ke as Kevin Owens, but I want him to be the Kevin Steen. It's like you, you know, stay as Kevin Owens, but you bring that Kevin Steen in you. You know, go and do go and be that guy. Go and be that guy you wear in Ring of Honor. You know, right. go and be that. I want that's what I want anyway. I agree. And I mean, he has used like a variation of the package pile driver, sort of like if you remember like early of his moon said he would hold it like he's doing the Patrick package pile driver, but he turned into like a slam. Yeah, package pile bomb. Yeah, package 
Thank you. Yeah, but no, that's that's interesting because I don't know if that move is banned. I don't know what they're doing with that maneuver. I mean, we see it in AEW with Pentagon with the Pentagon driver. So I mean, I don't know, man. I I think I, I like what you're saying because it's that element of Kevin Owens, but that added extension with Kevin Steen that we saw in Ring of Honor. So I get it. Yeah, and he would probably raise hell. I mean, yes. I think I said it was. What's this about Ronda Rousey? Let's oh my about. goodness, That's... Ronda Rousey. I, I saw this the other day. People want Ronda Rousey fired because yes. apparently she's not willing to do jobs. She's not willing to do spots in matches. She's just not willing to do anything. Apparently, I mean, what the fuck's up with that? Well, the proper example of that, and somebody put this on Twitter. So the Shotzi spot at Survivor Series where she was going for like the DDT on the apron and Ronda kind of just like sandbagged or flip-flopped like, oh, crap, I'm not going to take this move. So Bianca Belair took that move in NXT when she faced Shotzi perfectly in position. This one, I don't even know. And I think with what they're doing with Ronda now, and I'm going to say right now, Turn when she came in in 2018 at the Rumble and they built to that her and Kurt Angle against Stephanie and Triple H and then the few going in there with Becky and Charlotte like that was great but ever since she's come back it's been like a fart in church I mean the Charlotte feud was fine but ever since she's become the SmackDown Women's Champion it's gone to hell in a handbasket and I believe they said they're her opponent for the Royal Rumble and we could see that slow build there on SmackDown is going to be Raquel Rodriguez apparently as well yeah Came in, a feud with the team with Kurt, faced Triple H and Stephanie. It was meant to be The Rock, by the way. Yes. But I couldn't get, they couldn't get The Rock involved, so plan A didn't work. So what did he get? Oh, yeah, we'll go and get Kurt Angle, plan B. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just been dead. I mean, Charlotte, I hope Charlotte, I mean, Charlotte's coming back. Yep. I've seen her. She's been training with uh, the woman known as Curly Ray. Yes. As well, in ICW, ICW fans right there. So the woman known as Kelly Ray as well. So oh, that's just hope it's not me. But yeah, I, I haven't been thinking with um, Ronda, to be honest with you. I mean, I, you've got Ronda and Shayna Baszler. Mm-hmm. One of the members of this four horsewoman of the of the MMA is now in AEW. Yes. Oh, um, God. Let me start. I just got to bring this up. Probably. Yeah. One yeah of the, the, most, I think the it's, and now Roderick Strong's misses. Yes, Marina Shafir, probably one of the funniest promos of the year. You don't know me, and then right into you do know me. It just, she, I like Marina Shafir, don't get me wrong. Very talented MMA fighter, but when she was with Marina and Jessamyn Duke, when they were all in NXT together, those were the two weak links. And I've seen her in AEW now, like she's with Nyla Rose. She's the problem, Marina Shafir. Oh, good God. I'm just saying. And I don't hate her, but the, it's dead. It's ridiculous. But no. What I like, too, like you brought up, like Shayna Baszler's back with her. Shayna Baszler's that killer again. She's this queen of spades like we saw in NXT. Because I'll be honest, during the pandemic era, having this badass fighter, this MMA fighter, right, being scared of a doll. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. not the Shayna we know. Now she's yeah. back to being a killer. She broke Natalia's nose, man. Yeah, the, yeah. She, the, I think that... So, yeah, the whole Shotzi black, black art thing. I mean, I mean Baszler... I just have a feeling with Baszler, though, it's going to be her and Ronda Rousey. And that, so- I think, is the end game. I just would like to see how they would have her turn on Ronda and stuff like that, because that's the ultimate match that a lot of people want to see. And, I mean, with Shayna right now, the feud is probably when Natalia's back up and running with her nose. Like, you know, we get to see her and Natalia again, which I'm all for. You know what I'm saying? The former tag team partners going at it. Uh, I'm I'm really interested to see the direction that they go with that so i mean you never know but i think ronda and uh, raquel will do very well at the royal rumble personally i think that could be lead to something where raquel either loses here and gets it at mania i don't know the direction but i'm really curious to see how they play off of that because raquel has such stature and presence about her so that should be interesting yeah maybe bays learned uh thing at wrestlemania yep under mania maybe that'd be a perfect thing for that as well but yeah i mean yeah, I mean, Ronda's run lately is, is, well, hasn't got my attention. I'll, I'll tell you that for nothing. Um, and I, the whole Liv Morgan thing, they really fucked their over, but in my opinion, on that one, it's just, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy. Should have gave her a longer run. Should have gave her a, long, a little bit of a longer run. But... Right. I mean, I'm happy that she, after all these years, she finally got the championship. But yeah, then. They, they took it off of her, obviously, and now she's going this extreme hardcore style, and like we mentioned earlier, Tegan Knox being paired with her against Dakota Kai and 
EO Sky should be very interesting. I think that'll be a great tag feud in the future. So I'm for, I'm for it, man. And I mean, with Tegan Knox, she has a new look, not looking like the old Tegan that we know. People talking about the crowd reaction that really was not that much of a crowd reaction. But I always say this about it. There's two different types of wrestling fans within the WWE auspices. There's the main roster fans. And then there's the NXT fans. There are just people that just watch the main roster. And then there's people that just, you know, are more NXT and know where they come from and stuff. So there's either people that either either didn't notice or, you know, had like a, you know, with how she looked or they're just, they don't follow NXT. But us like us, who we know about the history with Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai. So I'm curious to see where that goes as well. We can have a proper reintroduction of Tegan Knox, And people will say what they will about Emma because Emma hasn't been in the WWE since 2017, 2018. And she's been an impact. But I mean... I'm happy to see her back, but let's see where we can actually go with this. I know Madcap Moss, who she's dating, and in real life, they encompass that storyline briefly with them. And they're doing Lacey Evans another reboot, just based off the fact that she was a Marine again. So we have another reboot for Lacey Evans. I was going to say that might work with her. Everybody's right. Everybody's crapping on that one, but I think that might actually work with her because, again, Marine she, background and all that. She so, was a Marine. She was military police. So you go from this Southern Belle with the classy dresses and act like a lady to this friggin', you know, we're, we're going to talk about my family and my upbringing and then turn heel. And now we have the proper way of going back to basics. So people will shit on, oh, it's a rebrand. It's another rebrand. But you have a talent, Lacey Evans, who is very talented. I mean, we saw her from the start and jump with NXT, the May Young Classic, and her transformation to the main roster. So, I mean, you have something that finally fits, and it's something that's based off her real life. So it correlates and, you know, coincides. Speaking of NXT, yes, I got to admit, I'm impressed with what they're doing with Apollo Crews. This you is know, no more Nigerian gimmick. Yes. That's, that's... That was awful. Well, you know, I, and I've known this guy well before. I've watched this guy well before. Oh, by the way, I don't know. I forgot what they called Tegan Knox before she came to WWE. Oh, there. the Nixon Newell or one of those. Nixon Newell, that's it. That, that's the one. They call, that's what I called her when she was doing WCPW and all the other indie wrestling promotion. But yeah, Apollo Crews, he seems to be getting the push because it's going to be at some point him and ba- uh, Byron Breaker. Yep. Dogface Gremlin Jr. Next uh, week. That, that's next week, Anthony. Braun Breaker. What's next week? Yes. Okay. Next Saturday. It, it, it's, yeah. I mean, it seems to be working. Oh, that's the... Uh, deadline. That's the new yeah, Deadline, yeah. Um, the new pay-per-view that uh, HBK brought out mm-hmm. uh, as well. So, yeah, that's... Um, I would like to see him wear the belt, to be honest with you. Maybe he, Del- Triple H can bring him up. Right. Do- he's one of the guys man with Apollo Crews like when we first saw him in 2016 I felt he was called up to the main roster way too quick and they had him feud briefly with Sheamus uh they had him and Kalisto against Dolph Ziggler for those that remember that feud um then he just you know he kind of was doing the Titus worldwide stuff and then he kind of floundered a little bit then during the pandemic era he was the United States champion then he d- decided to develop a Nigerian accent and then he won the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania so he had a mania moment but ever yeah. since he had that you know Commander Aziz gimmick it went nowhere yeah. and so they brought him back to NXT as the Apollo Crews and this a while. This is a long time coming. He actually about Apollo Cruz again. The storylines that we've seen him with Grayson Waller and work his way, his premonition, if you will, his prediction of, "Hey, I'm gonna go for you, Braun. This is not gonna be you know, the Apollo Cruz more revigorated, more rejuvenalized." And they had that sit down at the diner there. It's great storytelling, and it shows the wares of Braun Breaker. Hey, I've been the champion for so long; it's kind of wearing on me. But you know what? I don't sweat it. I'm gonna go fish, and I'm gonna win. I'm gonna beat Apollo Cruz. And I think it'll have great chemistry. Will we see Apollo end the year at deadline with the NXT championship or will Braun still retain? And then we move forward to another match. I don't know, but they have me intrigued with Apollo Crews. Yeah, I mean, even NXT seems to be going back to normality at least. It, yeah. yeah. I was with the whole black and gold stuff and everything. Well, I was skeptical about yeah, it. Yeah, they have to rebuild the whole thing, though. 
Right. And I was skeptical about it because I'm just like, okay, well, we don't have a lot of the people that we have from the black and gold. We're just introducing these new people, which is what it is again. It's it's a developmental, but it's it showcase and highlights a lot of great talent. I mean, I like Charlie Dempsey's on there. They brought in a lot of NXT UK talent. They brought in Isla Dawn, who's gonna feud with Alba Fire, Kaylee Ray now. We mentioned Braun Breaker and Apollo Cruz. Carmelo Hayes is exceptional. We have this iron survivor match now, the most pinfalls in 25 minutes, and then the penalty box if you get pinned, a la King of the Mountain match in TNA so it's an interesting yeah. concept yeah I hope I hope and pray that Chugs gets well yes so and you know if you all know if you watch on Twitch and you see the streams you all know who Chugs is baby okay mm-hmm. it's Adam Cole there's all this talk that he's it's, it's scary to think that there's all this talk that he may not even be wrestling again considering what's going on but the last time he wrestled was in AEW he was part of that four way for the IWGP title and he hasn't wrestled since so it's, and actually he did come back at one point yes I don't know if it was that was that I don't know was that before was that before the, the I, when they turned on the box I think it might have been after, like they turned on the Bucks, and that was the last time we saw him. Or might I, I think you might be right. It might have been before, but nonetheless, that's the thing too, because Kyle O'Reilly has a neck injury. Greg and Adam Cole may not ever wrestle again. So that and Bobby Fish, Bobby Fish and Impact, Bobby Fish is an Impact, and Roddy's an NXT, still a part of the Diamond Mines. So I mean. It's very interesting to see where the career and the toll Adam Cole will be with his concussion. Will Big E on the WWE side, will he ever wrestle again? So it's interesting, you know? But the thing is, as well, everybody, let's switch a little bit, switch into AEW as well a little bit, because we're going to be talking about AEW. Everybody was shocked about that turn up, that turn up, that uh, the <clears throat> undisputed elite. Uh, did to the Young Bucks, which led to Hangman Page coming out and led, eventually led to Omega return as well. Everybody was surprised about that and shocked and everything. I wasn't. As a fan, I wasn't. Because if you saw Adam Cole stomping the Young Bucks, stomping the Young Bucks, stomping the Young Bucks, to stomping them, he even said it himself, did you forget what I... What you did? Do you think I forgot what you did? Mm-hmm. Do you think I forgot what you did? Especially when he came in first debuting it with a Omega before he chin before he kicked the thingy's head off, Jungle Boy's head off. Yep. Do you forget what I did? Do you think I forgot what you did to me? Going back, his last match in Ring of Honor, I believe. I believe it was Final Battle. It was one of the pay per views. You found that one of the big show. Yeah, it was one of the big shows. And they kicked him out of Bullet Club and brought in Marty Skull. Mm-hmm. Long term story time, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it was about. So, and that's what it, it came into there. Because he joined them, but obviously he wanted his boys in the Undisputed Elite over there. Why they got rid of Bobby Fish for, I don't know, but whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, they brought him. I mean, they had a tag team there in their own right Carl O'Reilly and freaking Bobby Fish, Red Dragon. Yep. Crying out loud, so bad to go with the Bobby Fish. I'll never know, but that's what it was. It did, and I was never surprised about that. A lot of people online, oh, I'm surprised about that. But anyway, let's talk AEW. Yes, we may go back to WWE later on, but let's talk AEW. What is your take with AEW? Because people seem to like it, people seem to don't. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have had new world tag team champions in in uh, the acclaim. Max Caster, the acclaim. And rightly so, because they're great. And even though I was a bit with uh, Max Caster, but yes, he grew on me. He was he's grew on me. He's done some good work. I remember a couple of months ago, I even said this on Twitter. I watched an AEW show, and I even said it. It's great to watch Ring of Honor. It was great to watch Ring of Honor tonight. I watched AEW Dynamite. It was great to watch Ring of Honor because it was full of Ring of Honor matches, Ring of Honor build matches. There was mostly Ring of Honor build matches on there. Do you think it's time for them to get a separate brand? Yes. To separate, to separate the Ring of Honor from yes. AEW television? Yes. I think it is. 
Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of people get tired of watching Ring of Honor on the AEW because it's like, all right, if I want to watch Ring of Honor, I'll watch Ring of Honor. I think we need to finally have that brand. I think they're he was he, Tony Khan's hoping to get this TV deal. I mean, he's got the Ocho, Chris Jericho as the champion. Oh, you know, sure. being, I know the disruptor of a of a Ring of Honor defending against people like Ishii and many different variations and Bendito. But that's the thing now, because we have final battle coming this Saturday, main evented by Jericho and Claudio Castagnoli. And if Jer- if Claudio loses, he has to join the JAS. I mean, they added more. Please don't let that happen. I know. Please they, don't let they, that happen. Well, they added more matches to it, Anthony. They also have Mercedes Martinez and Athena for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. They have the, excuse me, they have um, JC Griffey, whoever that is, and Shane Taylor against Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. They have Samoa Joe and Juice Robinson for the Ring of Honor Television Championship. And, yeah, that's that's pretty much... That's what... two interesting matches right there for me. Mm-hmm. Don't forget Daniel Garcia and Weir Yuta. Yuta, yes, thank you. For the uh, pure title. Mm-hmm. So which, has been brewing, which has been brewing since Daniel Garcia won the thing. Yep. Um, but that was interesting as well. First interesting thing seemed Rampage. Shane Taylor. Yep. Showing up in AEW. And for those of you that don't know, before Keith Lee went to WWE, he was tag team partners with Shane Taylor. And J.D. Griffin, I don't know, Griffin, I don't know who that is. I'll probably find out when when he when it eventually comes to final battle. But Shane Taylor and I'd be interested to see them two get back together in in AEW. Well, that's the but thing. I don't know where it's going with him in Strickland. Yeah, because, you know, he walked out on him and he doesn't know if he can trust him, which is the deal. And I mean, with Shane Taylor, like him and Keith Lee were an amazing tag team ring of honor. We mentioned them earlier. Their feud with War Machine was absolutely amazing. Um, Like, that's the thing, man. You, there's a dichotomy of their former tag team partners. And here we are, Shane Taylor being the longest reigning ring of honor television champion. So they have he's represents the newer age of ring of honor and Keith Lee represents, you know, where their former tag team and stuff. So we talk about storytelling that works in its favor. So that's what we have so far. And for those that want to see ring of honor final battle, since it's the same day as deadline, it airs here in the States at 4 PM Eastern. So it'll be probably around 9 PM your guys time when it airs. Yeah. Um, that's another interesting thing as well. Is it 9 PM? Well, so it starts Saturday, here- on Saturday. Yes, so it starts here in the States at 4 p.m. and then NXT's ends at like, it starts at 8 and probably end around 10. So yeah, they're about four hours before NXT's deadline airs on the WWE. I, might be able to get to I, won't, I don't know if I'll be able to watch it live. I might be able to get to watch it when it's finished because it'll, be yep. it'll, be, it'll be three hours. So basically they're competing with deadline, aren't they? So yeah. that's fine. But yeah, that's, that, that, that's interesting to me. Maybe they can do that as well because like I say, I don't know where they're going with Strickland, this whole Strickland thing. Since they lost the tag titles and everything, and you know, it's it like Shane's like, get a partner, and we'll, we'll take, we'll settle this at uh, final battle and everything like that. And then he turned, and then Keith turned around and see Strickland there with, you know, I don't know where this is all going, but Samoa Joe, mm-hmm. Ring of Honor World Television Champion and TNT Champion at least, at least until um, Wardlow gets out of him, at least. Going against Juice Robinson. When did that come about? So it was on Rampage last night. No, two nights ago. Excuse me, guys. We're recording this. Yeah. On Rampage, he cut the promo and he said, I'm challenging Samoa Joe at final battle for the Ring of Honor Television Championship. So that's how it got came about. He cut a promo. Wow, I never, well, I, I just flicked through. I never think either. I think Rampage needs to be two hours, if you ask me. Um, I mean, okay, 60 minute works, but. I think this time to top the year just a little bit now and make it two hours and make it a presentable show because all this talk about the ratings and that. But yeah, Juice Robinson, who left New Japan Pro Wrestling, was a member of Bullet Club, mm-hmm. <clears throat> was pretty much obsessed with the IWGP United States Championship. I'm sorry, but it seemed it seemed to get, it seemed to get that way. He was obsessed with that belt. It's going to be interesting to see how he fits in AEW. Are they going to put him on the Ring of Honor roster, or are they going to put him in the AEW roster and have him go for an AEW title? Well, I mean, his wife is there. That being, yeah, that's the only reason he's there. The main reason he's there because his missus is there, Tony Storm. Yep. So, and she just lost the Ring of Honor, the, the AEW Women's Title, what they eventually called the AEW Women's World Title reign. 
yes. not the interim, because apparently Thunder Rosa had to um, hand the belt over. Um, I, I, look, a lot of people fucking slate this all interim title thing. I like it. You know, they gave the interim title thing with with Tony Storm. Mm-hmm. They gave it and gave it and gave it. If it gets to the point, if it gets to the point where Thunder can't compete with it, you know, can't compete and defend the title like she's supposed to and everything like that, then fair enough. Strip that. Change the interim to the world title. And just go with that. Yeah. Have it on standby. Have it on standby. I hated the fact where they used to strip the belts from them because they couldn't compete. Oh, yeah, 30 day runners. And you say, oh, yeah. I mean, take Finn Balor, for example. Mm-hmm. Guy wins the universal title, first universal champion. Next day, he has to forfeit it because of his injury. It's like, you know, give an interim title and just keep it and then bring it back in because it may, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. Yes, it makes it look like MMA. I get it, but whatever. But I'm I'm not down with all this stripping of the title that quick. For me, that's just me anyway. I mean, it's it's a mixture of yes, it's very MMA esque, but also at the same time, it's like I think they want a definitive champion, and I think of Thunder Rosa, which how she is, I'll be honest with you, we'll we'll see. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's that angle when she comes back or what have you with that. But they also have Saray over here doing the interview on Rampage where she said she's coming for the AEW Women's Championship. So I mean, it's going to be interesting to see her get back in the mix after her return beating Britt Baker. So. It's going to be interesting to see Saray up in the mix, if you will. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Okay? Thank the good Lord. The good Lord. That it's now going to be the acclaimed in FTR. Yes. I mean, well... That had to happen. Uh, the other side of the thing I really don't want to see is I don't want to see FTR against the Ass Boys because you know they're going that way too for the Ring of Honor tag titles probably. Well, that'll be an easy payday for uh, FTR then. Yes, <laughs> an easy payday for them. Speaking of outlaws, and we were talking about outlaws. Yes. Let's say the better. Yes. Speaking of outlaws, outlaw Jeff Jarrett. Oh God. Now, he has took his GCW gimmick, or this new gimmick that he's been developing outside of WWE before he got the boot, Mm -hmm. which I have to admit was a little unfair, by the way, but it is what it is. Um, And now he's brought the outlaw gimmick, this new outlaw slap nut chosen one gimmick that he's developed, and he's brought it to AEW. He made his debut by whacking Darby Darby Allen Allen with a guitar, Mm -hmm. and now he's lurking around frigging... Sonny, um, what's his name? Sanjay Dutt. Yep. Jay Lethal. What the fuck has happened to that guy? Team TNA, man. Team TNA. Team, that's, that's, that's what it basically is. Team TNA with a big giant as their bodyguard. That's it's what that, it is. That's that Satnam saying. Poor bastard. <laughs> that guy could be a fucking... That guy, that guy could be a big... Mon- that, that, guy, that guy could be AEW's um, Omas. Yeah. Except yeah. he's lurking around them three clowns. <laughs> you know, as you clearly said, Team TNA. That's well, why you're hearing all the fuck TNA, fuck right. TNA, because that's what it basically is. Well, they're setting up TNA's the bitch, TNA's bitch boys. Well, they're setting up the acclaim to go against Jared and Lethal because I mean, we oh, had Jared and Le- well, we had Jared and Lethal fight Ric Flair and Andrade in his last match. So hey, now we're in AEW, <laughs> put Jeff Jared and Jay Lethal together, and they're gonna go for the tag titles. But help me if they win. That's all I can say. God oh, help God. me if they win. I mean, come on. Get J. I mean, J. Lethal. Once upon a time, was running Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. He had the TV title and the fucking world title. And now look at it. He's he- Sanjay Dutt's lapdog. He's Sanjay Dutt's lapdog. Mm-hmm. And now him and Sanjay now Jeff Jarrett's lapdogs. It- <laughs> for some reason, the I- outlaw I- dogs. Was I call the outlaw dogs? Uh, I mean, golly, man. I hate I mean, it. Jeff Jarrett. Hall of Famer. Yep. Apparently he's work. Apparently he's now in with AEW. He's working behind the scenes with AEW. Basically doing the job that he did for WWE now in AEW. Yes. Um. God help me if he becomes AEW World Champion. But I doubt that will that will happen. I have no. I have not a clue. 
I know what his role is behind the scenes, but I have no clue what the fuck his role is. It's like a business thing, kind of like what he did with the live events for. Um... No, I, I, it's, it's, I know this role behind the scenes with the business with the live events because apparently AEW want to go with the live events. Yeah, mode. and international stuff, yeah. And international stuff as well. And he knows that better than anybody, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> and that'll be good for AEW. But what's his role on, on TV besides being Sanjay's the outlaw, lap dogs? Being the, the outlaw, dogs, man. Yeah. Being the outlaw, man. I don't I know. Mean, what's his, I mean, he's, he renewed a rivalry with Sting. Yes. Well, sort of a rivalry with Sting. Sort of. That. Sort you know. of. I mean, I just don't get his role. I mean, he might as well just stay behind the scenes, but he wants to be the lap dogs. I mean, he comes out for a tag match on Rampage, mm. assuming that, you know, as soon as ass... Daddy ass turn round, Billy Gunn to you and I. Um, Daddy ass turn round and says, We want the best tag team. He assumed it was going to be them two. Well, so well, he was like walking down to it. As soon as he was, and as he was just about to walk down the ramp, FTR's music hit. Well, hold on. You, you made a great point there because the, here's the funny part about that. They're looking for the best tag team. Then Sting and Jeff Jarrett, I'm sorry, Sting and Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal come out. And it's like, Wait a minute. You guys had one tag match and you lost. How are you the best tag team in AEW? You know, and him and, and Jerry and Lethal had one tag team match, and it was outside of AEW with Ric Flair's last fucking match. Yes. For Christ's sake, <laughs> which should never have happened, which should never have happened no. to begin with. No. I mean, and Ricky I Steamboat got in the ring at 69, and he did fabulous. Yeah, but Ricky Steamboat can go. I know. He's proven, he's proven that. I mean, he, that guy can probably go at freaking eight years old. I mean, the no, one not. match. I mean, everybody thought he was good. Everybody thought it was a big mistake when he wrestled Jericho all them years ago. And it was amazing. He hanged, and he hanged with Jericho for crying out loud. You know, he could probably wrestle Jericho now. Um, but yeah, golly. Outlaw Jeff Jarrett. Mm-hmm. He'd be a perfect fit with another with some more outlaws. Ugh. Except <laughs> well, less said about that, the better. But golly. I mean that hat. The dark thing. I mean, it was basically it's basically his GCW gimmick because he did show up in GCW for a bit as well. It's basically his GCW gimmick. Um, but he's I, I just don't get it. I just don't see where this fits in here. I, mean, I can understand his position behind the scenes. He's live events, lot of business dude. He's ahead of that now because apparently AEW want to go to international and do live events and all that stuff, which is fine. They're going to have to do that at some point anyway to make a little bit of money on the side. <clears throat> but I, I, yeah, I just don't get where he fits on the TV. I, besides I, being Team TNA and all that shit. I couldn't even tell you, man. But all I know is, I mean, there's a lot going on AEW with the with the punk thing and <laughs> we're still seeing yeah, it. Let's, let's talk about the punk thing. What the fuck was that? A, 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 I mean, everybody. I mean, see, but until the first time, seeing Punk's being made out to be the bad guy. I mean, he tells the truth, and he gets probably got me the more story in my life, pretty much. I get, to, I tell the truth. I get my words taken out of context, and I get final warnings, and I get figuring all this stuff and everything like that thrown at me. I get my words taken out of context, which is fine. Story in my life, and I'll never be sorry for being honest. But he's honest. With everything that happened to him at the post thing, at the, the the scrum, and the next minute they have the brawl, and he's getting kicked out. You know, okay. I mean, and the elite made out to be the bad guy. All right, <clears throat> I'll I'll follow up with that. So it all started because of whatever. Like the story came out that which is not true. That CM Punk is the reason why Colt Cabana hasn't been on TV and yada yada whatever. And Bloody. And Cole Cabana is one of the boys in AEW. So Hangman goes off script before their title match and says something about workers' rights and derp der and that pissed off CM Punk, and he didn't want to do business with Hangman Adam Page. Then the match comes where he beats Moxley, goes into the scrum. He's got his bakery muffins, whatever he was eating, and his drink, and he's tired. He's told him, I'm tired, and I work with fucking children. He was pissed that the rumor got out. He was pissed about everything, so he just vented everybody's in the wrong. And the reason why I say punk was very honest and I, I'm more on punk's side than the bucks and Kenny Omega and whatnot there. And of course what happened with a still afterward, the issue though is you're at a press, you're at this media scrum. It's a press conference, this media scrum. And the problem is you don't act like that in front of that. This is something that could have been done behind closed doors. And the problem is 
if this if he had done this in WWE where Triple H was there or Vince McMahon was there, they would have shut this down. But Tony Khan, and again, Tony Khan loves professional wrestling, but I'm going to say this right now, and I know how people are going to feel. He's probably one of the biggest marks ever, and he loves CM Punk so much that he didn't when he did this, Punk did this, like he should not be his job to say whatever. This is when he should have shut it down, but he couldn't because he did not know what to do because he's a fanboy. And again, I respect the fact that he loves and respects professional wrestling, but he's a fanboy. He does not know how to handle this situation. He should have shut it down, but he let it go because media scrum. But everybody was in the wrong, but I tend to more lean towards the punk side because punk is trying to be professional and he's trying to, you know, it, well, it, it's going to piss you off on so many levels and variables here because it's like, Hangman Adam Page doesn't want to listen to the veterans, and that's the thing that comes into the AEW locker room, where this is all kind of coincides here. There's a level of immaturity there. That's what William Regal even said. Like, they came out, like, he was talking about there's a maturity level here that's not there. There's no maturity here because everybody thinks they know anything and they don't want to listen. So there's a lot of variables that tie into what happened with the media scrum that we see has really influxed ever since. Another thing as well with that, you know, going to the B, being the elite, I believe it was yeah BT BT when Punk debuted. I believe they did a back behind the scenes of that. Yes, when you just saw Punk getting ready and he's turning around, going, mm -hmm. you know, with the whole thing went out, and you saw Kenny Omega and Young Buck's face. He was like, oh, God, you know, this kind of stuff and everything. Yes, uh, I guess that was the thing as well. I don't know if they were acting because of that. I think that I was on that. Oh, that could have been the real thing as well. No, I think that was part of it. I mean, the then you hear stories coming out about like he wanted to change the formula. He wanted more storytelling involved with AEW. You know what I'm saying? And less of like you know going spot 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 spot. So he wanted to infiltrate more storytelling, and everybody laughed at him and said, you know, he wanted to change the formula. He wanted to be like a business, like he said in the media scrum. He's like these guys thinking they're in Reseda, which for those that don't know, Reseda is California, and that's where the Young Bucks and all them came from with Excalibur and Pro Wrestling Gorilla. So his words, almost verbiage, was like, I want this to be run like a business, not a high budget indie. So that's where I think he was also going and infiltrating with those verbiages. It's a lot of it's a lot of variables, man. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with running a company like a business, unless you want to be, unless you want to turn it into an indie promotion. But anyway, um, so yeah, AEW. But like I said, I like AEW. I like where it's going. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things I need to do. They need they need to change. Speaking of changing, oh boy. NWA, <laughs> National Wrestling Alliance, or whatever the fuck they're calling it now. Yep. Because Nick Aldis left. Yep. He shoot, and he says the product's changed. Yep. And from the looks of it, he's right. But then again, he goes out and says what he says, and he gets suspended. <laughs> and the guy's contract runs out in January, I believe. Yes. And fucking Corgan suspended him. Uh, he's out of his it's mind. Like, just fire if if you're gonna if you don't want him on your TV, dude. Just fire the motherfucker. The guy's contract runs out. Let him go. There you go. See you later. That kind of thing. But you suspended him until his contract runs out. It's become what the fun. fuck is that about? It's become funny because that happened. And it's the thing, the comments he said about empower and women's wrestling. Like, you know, there's not the NWA style, which also goes into Trevor Murdoch saying what he said, you know, we don't have the talent for another empower. And I'm like, okay, you brought in Kylie Ray, Mickey James, and all these people from the Indies. And, you know, they put on a hell of a show with that NWA empower event. But, you know, it's just there's there's a lot of stuff that NWA is being criticized for. And of course, now that the former Brodus Clay Tyrus is the NWA champion now, and people have been shitting on that. Like out of everybody, Tyrus. There's two variables that look at that. Like one, you know, it's bad when freaking Tyrus is the world champion, but also number two, the man is on Fox news and say what you will about Fox news. And I'm not a big fan of it, but he's on Fox news and he can get more exposure to the title because he's on a big network, you know, talking about politics and whatever he talks about. So, I mean, I understand it from that business standpoint as well, but Corgan and also comparing it to like Lashley and freaking Lesnar or whatever that main event was. And I'm like, no, and just, oh, Corgan, I know. And Corgan, 
Well, that's the thing. When he first came into TNA and he was in 2016 and he was helping Dixie and whatnot and really helped TNA not go out of business at the time. I mean, people would always talk about they go with that global championship, how they made it like friggin MMA boxing with the three rounds and whatnot. I mean, he's always had ideas and he's always been a fan. I mean, he did some stuff with ECW back in the day and he would. I was never I, I was never into that global title. Me either. It wasn't my thing. Wasn't my thing either, dude. And I mean, with Morgan, it's just he, yeah, that, that company has taken a massive uh, free fall, if you will. Free fall. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was one segment on there where he tried to get, I remember watching one segment with the US tag titles. They brought back the US tag titles, ladies and gentlemen. Not the caliber ones, they just they look like some rinky dink little belts that he just stuck a figure from USA flag on from, from what I'm seeing. Or replica belts that just took a USA flag, but anyway, the guy's walking around. I can't remember the champion is, mm-hmm. but they got him up in the in the talking position. It was Corgan, the interviewer, and the guy with the belt. It was the US, one of the US tag tech champions. Mm-hmm. He brings out another belt, Corgan, which is apparently a heritage belt, mm. leaning going back and everything. And he said that this is the US title. <laughs> First of all. The belt had nothing to do, looked like it had nothing to do with the United States Championship to begin with because there was no flag of the US belt or anything. I think it was like a Michigan belt or something. Yeah. I have to go back and watch the clip. And he tries to hand it over. And the guy didn't take it. He didn't take the belt. He kept this one, which, in my opinion, was the right call. Yes. And he made an idiot out of Corgan. You got fucking Joe Gale whatever the fuck his name is, the yes man, the walking yes man in the NWA, from what I've seen, calling the guy an idiot for not taking the belt. A, a belt that has nothing to do with the United States tag team titles, from what it seems. Okay, fair enough. The fucking tool bag he is. Gladly. And then you've got Velvet Sky, who's trying to be the peacemaker. Mm-hmm. But she's dreaming of being v- Big Van Vader more times than she's doing what she's doing on the figure thing, you know, Vader, ta- Vader yeah, fuck off Velvet with that shite, okay, Vader called from heaven, he wants his gimmick back, you stupid, no, yeah, it's time, it's time, it's Velvet time, no, it's not, it's Vader time, it always will be Vader time, stick that, you know, that's gimmick infringement, you're lucky Vader's not here, and I, 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 I just do not get where this coming, and I see where Nick this is saying, because, You've got a guy here that speaks his mind. He carried the freaking promotion through the pandemic, for Christ's sake, as the champion. You gave Cody a run with it before getting it back from Cody. He helped the company. And because he's honest, Colgan's like, oh, we'll suspend you until your contract runs out, but you will no longer be on TV. They even took him off because he was a producer. Mm-hmm. And apparently now his replacement is Tom Pritchard. I heavy oh. bodies, Tom Pritchard. For yeah, I know. Skip and zip, man. Skip and zip. Skip and oh. skip and no. Oh, God. <laughs> if Adi down is bless you, Chris. God bless you, Chris Candido. Yes. No, but, but, no that's that's just yeah, that company. It's is, gone from the NWA. Yeah. And I was impressed with it at first. It's gone from that to just a rinky dink little indie promotion. Yep. With a platform for people just to get over. Yeah, that's, that's all it's got. That's pretty there much was pretty. some emblems of the old NWA there, the way it was run, the way it was done, and everything. Now it's gone from that to just a stinky little fucking show. And the the, the NWA USA on the YouTube that's what they call it the USA show they've got on YouTube that needs to be an hour, not 30 minutes. First of all, they've got power, which is doing well. I'll yep. give them that. It's it's keeping them afloat at least. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's keeping them afloat at least. Whether it's on Fight TV or even on YouTube. They've even put the replays on YouTube, which is a smart move on their part. I'll give them that. Uh, Mr. Brodus Clay Tyrus, now the NWA World Champion. I think that's only because they've got him on, he's on Fox, like you say. Oh, yeah, we'll just stick the bell on here. Maybe he can go out and get Fox. Maybe get us a Fox TV deal. That ain't going to work. No, why WWE's on their network. The NWA World Television title 
is now still in the camp of Austin Idol. Talk about motor mouth, fucking hell. But he's good at what he does. I bef- you know, and you've got Mark Cardona, who needs to get back to WWE, by the way. Which it's you know what's coming, but I think yeah, he, he needs to get back to WWE ASAP. Yeah, he wants and to not be, be Zack Ryder anymore. He needs to be the Matt Cardona. Yes, that's I think what oh, he Zack Ryder. Get him in there as Matt Cardona and just let him turn him loose. Yeah, well, yeah, he's a Chelsea... lot better now than he was when he was Zack Ryder. Right. When when Chelsea's coming in, you want to have him come in as Cardona, not as Zack Ryder. Yeah, he needs to yeah. Put the put the Zack Ryder gimmick to bed. Yep. Bury it, burn it if you have to. I don't give a shit. <laughs> he needs to come back as Matt Cardona. Right. If you're going to bring him back as well. And even bring Mike Knox in as well. Have the Cardona things in there. The fucking bias deal with, with they do at ringside. I mean, Velvet Sky at ringside. When she hates the Cardonas, it's, yeah, it's gross. How Tim Storm can figure put up with them two at ringside is a mate. That guy deserves a fucking medal. At least you got someone who talk, who knows what the fuck he's talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows what he's talking about in, the, in ring and out the ring. And I think apparently he's, he's, he's the matchmaker now. Yes, he's the match. He's he's the matchmaker now with the NWA. He's basically NWA Booker, I believe. That's what they're called, matchmaker, whatever. But yeah, I'm disappointed with the NWA. The NWA's gone to shit. It really has. Unfortunately, it really has gone to shit, man. Unfortunately, it has. But I got to say, in the world of professional wrestling, folks, there's a lot of great stuff out there. So definitely go in and check it out, man. I mean, I think we pretty much nailed the head on it of everything today. So, I mean, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. And even Impact Wrestling as well. I give Impact Wrestling a lot of credit. You want to talk about Impact Wrestling? The only wrestling promotion that's been on life support more times than any other promotion (laughs) in this freaking life. Right. I mean, it's still doing its thing. I don't mind it, man. I mean, they brought in Connor for Violent by Design from the Ascension, and I know they're doing their stuff now with uh, Josh Alexander and Bully Ray. <laughs> Josh Alexander, Bully Ray, fucking hell! And a couple of years, a couple of years, about a year or two ago, they brought back the Aces and Eights. Yeah, you know, back then it was D'Lo Brown, Nux, as Briscoe and Nux, and even Knox get, get Knox out of the NWA and bring him back. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the last time, I mean, he even had Bully Ray wrestling the end of the way against Knox for crying out loud. But yeah, at least there is good wrestling promotions out there. Just in my opinion, and I'm sorry to say this, the NWA is not on that list. I agree. No, I'm that's... very disappointed with the NWA at the moment and the direction it's going. And some of the stuff they've done on their YouTube channel, some of the stuff with their shows. The only good thing about the NWA is the talent. Because like I say, it's now a platform for talent just to get over. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good talent in there. Hey, Ricky Starks was TV champion in there. Now look at him, he's in AEW, challenging for the title with MJF. Speaking of MJF, I don't know where the hell they were going with this whole thing with MJF. The whole thing with him and Regal. And now... He wins the diamond ring after doing the promo and getting taken off TV for God knows how long. He does the diamond ring with the the whole, the diamond, whatever the fuck they call it, the, the, the money in the bank thing. AEW yeah, dynamite yeah. ring and then the casino battle royale, the chip. Casino battle royale, that's the one. Um, they do the casino battle royale. The group that they've got, remind me the name. Oh, the firm. The firm. He hires them to be their his his boys so he can get the ring comes back challenges for the world title Re- he gets into this promo confrontation with him and Regal after what happened in the past with him and Regal Regal is a part of the Blackpool Combat Club mm-hmm. and then they turn at him <laughs> he turns on Regal and now apparently Regal's going back to WWE, which is way he belongs, to be honest with you. Um, so where is this going with, with MJF? Well, the thing, oh. too, well, you had the thing with Ambrose, right? So you had the thing with Ambrose, which now it looks like we're gravitating more towards him and Hangman Adam Page in a feud because of what happened with Hangman getting the concussion. So I see where that's going. Then you also have the fact that, I mean, see, Stokely Hathaway came out and said pretty much on Jericho's podcast or whatever interview we did, that it was supposed to be Punk wanted to 
you know, work with the firm and guys like that. So possibly Punk could have been involved in that whole thing with MJF or what have you. But now with the direction that they're going, since William Regal looks to be, on, uh, uh, probably is, and yeah, on the way out going back to WWE after that turn with MJF, the new few now looks to be MJF and Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson taken up for his mentor, the man who trained him and William Regal. So you have one direction where Moxley's not even going to get the revenge on Regal or what have you, and we're not going to see MJF and Moxley again in maybe a rematch. But then maybe they'll do it down the line. I don't know. But you're going towards now Moxley and Hangman Page. And over here, you're going against MJF and Brian Danielson because he did also take a shot at Brian Danielson, saying he's a better wrestler. So Moxley and MJF is on hold, but now we have the new feud also really incorporated with the Blackpool Combat Club with MJF and Brian Danielson. So that looks to be where we're going. I just, yeah, it's it's crazy, man. I mean, the whole thing with MJF. I don't know ways. I don't know where they're going with him. Who, who do you think would be better to get rid of quickly before we end this? Who do you think would be, be would be the next guy to to beat MJF? Because he's not going to be giving up that title for a while. Let's yeah. be honest. It's tough, man. I mean, if they have the full story where Mox comes back and beat him, I could see that. Uh, I, Brian Daniels, I, it's tough. I think right now it's just, let's see where it goes. Obviously, his next title defense is that winner is coming against Ricky Starks, and we know Ricky Starks ain't the one to beat him. Um, no, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm looking forward just to seeing where it goes. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I can't have a pinpoint answer on that, but as of right now, I'm more invested in how we get to MJF and Brian Danielson because I know they'll tear their house down. But as of right now, I can't answer that. Yeah, just hopefully they don't put Claudio in the uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society. Nope. Let's just give just give Claudio back the Ring of Honor World title. Mm-hmm. Jericho's had his runs with it and everything. Give Claudio back the Ring of Honor World title and let's get freaking Ring of Honor a new TV deal and get him out of the way. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is about it for this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much. For tuning in, there will be podcasts down the road, guys. I will have some topics for you. I know our IRL stuff gets in the way and everything, but it is what it is. But yes, Michael Larkin, I'm Anthony Walker. Say goodbye, Michael. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'm so happy to be back with you, Anthony. If you guys want to follow me, the link's in the description. I will send Anthony. Links will be in the description to my YouTube channel and my Twitters and Instagram, so you guys can follow me. That's where you can check it out under this video. And I'm just happy to be back with you, my brother. After five years, we get a chance to do this. So yes. I really appreciate it. And it's not the first time this is going to happen. It won't oh. be the last time. We'll be doing this again, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be doing this again. Um, it's just we have busy IRL stuff and everything like that. But we are going to be doing this again in the new year. So this is going to happen again. We may, if we can, I doubt we will. But if we can, we can get it before that. We could, okay, we'll slip one in there before the new, before the Christmas and everything like that. But if not, we'll do it in the new year. We'll, we'll get it back up and running again in the new year. And we'll just talk more wrestling as well. Because that's what you get on these podcasts. We don't get promos on these podcasts. This is the Wrestling Matters podcast. Yes. There's no promotions here. Right, Michael? Wrestling Matters. Indeed. Thank God for that. So until next time, guys, Michael Larkin for yours truly, the host, Anthony Walker. I am done. Thank you. And good well, can't you see we are, we're running out of time? you got to lose your mind if you think you're doing fine. Sound <laughs> you can't describe me yet, but something is wrong.